Hi guys, um, before I start you the video on the prepping, um, I just want to give a shout out to Sparky Steve. Um, it's in response to his VR he's got running now. Um, he's just hit over the 100 subs, well just before that he's going to make 140, 150 now. Um, and what he wanted was uh, to say I'm in on his competition and then just do a VR as a shout out in on my next video. Um, so guys if you don't know who Sparky Steve is, please go and check out his, uh, his site, his YouTube channel. Um, great guy, really really nice guy, met him quite a few times now, done a camp with him as well. Um, some great videos on there, so guys if you don't know him, please go and check out Sparky Steve. Anyway Steve, I hope this is alright for you buddy, and uh, I'll see you at the Preppers Meet. Bye for now. Hi guys, so this is a video on um, prepping for the winter. Uh, usually around about end of September, beginning of October time, um, I start checking all the things I want to prep. and the, Things I prep for first off is um, heat and obviously power. Um, I've got a few things in place. Um, for heat wise, I do have a wood burner fitted. I had it fitted about three years ago. It was a little bit expensive, um, but it's a brilliant thing to have because if the power goes, um, as you're probably well aware, your central heating doesn't work. And because most houses in the UK have gas central heating, obviously it runs with electricity for the, the the timer and everything else on it so once the power goes you have no heating um, so I wanted to get rid of that situation where I didn't have to rely on that um, so I have a uh, wood burner it's a five only a five kilowatt um, but it does what I need it to do also I can use that for cooking on um, but it provides obviously hot water if I need it to and also gives me plenty of heat um, I built myself a wood shed um, started it end of well middle of last year end of last year kind of finished it this year um, it's double skin now brick and block proper tiled roof and everything on it um, so on the one side of the woodshed um, I got logs that I buy in they're all kiln dried they're all oak and beech um, they've got less than 20% moisture so they burn really efficiently um, and then recently I was uh, for a friend um, I was able to make contact with a oak manufacturer um, and all the offcuts the waste that he has there I'm now able to purchase that at a very good price, um, which I have stacked up in the other bay of the woodshed to see how I get on with that for this winter. I will show you guys in a bit um, the woodshed, etc. Um, but I just thought I'd lay off, uh, lay on a bit. Um, also, I've also got one of those little portable gas cookers. Um, I have about 20 tins of gas. Um, really handy thing to have. So if we do have a power cut, I can bring my camping kettle in, stick that on the side in the kitchen. So we can have hot drinks whenever we want. Um, also, obviously we can put a frying pan on there or a pot and we can cook on that as well. Um, so that's another good thing to keep in your garage, guys. It doesn't take up any space. Cheap and cheerful. Um, I think you can get, at the moment, go outdoors. They do the, the little portable gas cooker. I think with eight cans of gas for about 20 quid. Um, like I said, I bought one of those earlier, I think back in March this year. Um, I had that and I've got about 20 cans of gas in there um, because, you know, if we do have a power cut, it's only no, no more, I would say, two days maximum if it's going to be eight. Um, but like I said, I've kind of catered with 20 cans. That gives me enough way, I would say, about a week um, on that. Um, as for, like I said, the wood, um, I've got enough wood to last me through the winter. Um, so I said I've stacked up now ready. So when depending on when the winter kicks in, because we never know in this country, um, it could be October, it could be November, it could be December. Um, all depends when it starts to get cold, we just don't know. Um, but like I said, I'm fully prepared for the winter now on that. I also have um, a solar panel system. Um, I went with a photovolvic and not a solar. Um, reason being is on solar rely on more sun, where photovolvic rely on more on the daylight. Um, I only have a 100 watt system. Um, I have three big 100 amp uh, leisure batteries. I keep them fully charged all the time um, and they are perfect as a backup. I have an inverter as well so I can run a, a cool box on that. I could run the telly on it, whichever I needed to do. Just gives me that extra bit of uh, power where if I said the power does go away, instead of being bored if I need to charge the radio up or my phone or like I said watch a bit of telly or DVD entertainment wise, I've got that power to do it. Um, I also have a backup generator. Um, it's a 6,000 uh, ampage wires, so a 5 kA, 6 kVA, I think it is, um, but that will run the house. Um, it's a petrol generator. I've had it quite a few years. 
Um, they vary in price from a hundred pound you can get it from the one I got is about four fifty five hundred pound. Um, obviously, for the the bigger output you need or want, you've got to pay more money. Um, so that's what I've done there, guys. So when we when we talk about prepping in this community, we're not like some of the really crazy ones who prep for Armageddon and that. I I prep for the winter. Um, so I'm not a, an extreme prepper by any by all, any means whatsoever. Um, I just prep now because I know living where I live in quite a rural area. Um, if we do get heavy snowfall, last year we didn't get any, but the last three years before that, we've been cut off for a few days um, where we get heavy snow. And because we we live about 285 meters above sea level, it's all hills up coming up into where I live in the forest. Um, the roads get cut off; they're impassable. So you get stuck. So you can imagine there's no deliveries of food, anything else. Um, and like I said, sometimes the power goes out. So I back up. I have, like I said, I have a generator. I have a photovoltaic uh, solar power system. I also have uh, a portable gas cooker and I have my wood burner. Um, those kind of cover me for my heating and my energy. Um, in my next video, I will do about food preps, etc. Um, but I just thought I would just do this one. For all you guys there now, obviously winter's come in. Um, people say, oh, I'm not a prepper, I'm a bushcrafter, but we all prep in some way. Whether it's you going to the shop each week and getting your groceries for the week ahead, that is prepping, you're prepping for the week. Um, like I said, there's extreme preppers and there's normal prepping, but everybody preps in some way. Um, the same with your vehicle. Come the winter time, you probably put a snow shovel in there, you probably put de-icer in there, etc. A scraper for the windscreen. That's prepping, that's preparing your vehicle for the winter. Um, and this is what I've done here now for my heat and my energy. Um, just to make sure I don't get caught out. Like I said, it's only usually off for maybe a maximum of two days if it's an extreme one. Uh, most of the time it can be off for 12 hours. Um, but like I said, it just saves that thing of suffering or struggling um, when there's no need to. Like I said, with a wood burner, you've got heat and you can if you need to um, boil water on there or heat water on there and cook on it if you had to. Um, but like I said, I have other backups for that, like I said, with the portable gas stove, etc. Um, hope this goes gets you thinking, guys, you know, it's, it's best to just do little bits. You don't need to do a lot, and you don't need to spend a hell of a lot of money. Like I said, those little cookers, you can get those for like 20 quid um, with the gas. Um, they're perfect just to keep over under your kitchen sink, um, in your garage, in the shed. So if the power did go out on you guys, you've got a way of making a hot drink. Um, there's nothing worse than it being cold outside, uh, freezing conditions, and you've got no means of making a hot drink or keep yourself warm. At least if you, can, if you haven't got a wood burner or anything, at least if you've got that, you can have hot drinks, you can put extra layers on, throw a duvet ranger, and stay warm that way with hot drinks. That's, that's one thing you can do um, to keep your cold temperature up. Anyway, guys, I'm going to finish it there, guys. Um, I said I will be doing one next on the food preps. Um, that will come shortly. But anyway guys, if I don't see you before, I will see you at the Preppers Meet because I am going now. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to make it, uh, but thankfully I spoke to Johnny today and said, Johnny, yeah, I can make it now, so we're going to go to that. So I will see you guys there. If I don't, I'll see you at the next meet, wherever it is, or I'll see you in the next video. But anyway guys, take care and stay prepped. Bye for now. As you can see guys, I have um, a log stack there. Um, Basically that is two pallet loads. Um, I know in the States they call them cords, but over here you can get them in half turn bags um, or on the pallet. Um, that's the stuff I do uh, buy in. Um, also this is the stuff I uh, I get from um, an oak store. It's all the off cuts, the waste product that they get rid of. Um, so I collect that during the uh, summertime because they don't sell it during the winter because they use it for their own wood burner for the factory. Um, so I keep that. Um, so that's one of my preps. Also, I have this gas cooker, which is always in the garage. Um, I have about 20 cans, there's about 16 there, but I have about 20. Um, I also have my solar panel system as another backup, um, which charges the leisure battery. I have three of these 100 amperes. Um, it just gives me that extra bit of power if I need it. Um, all the uh, bits and pieces on the back. As you can see, it is charging now. Um, quite a good setup. I've had it a while. 
Um, it's a 100 watt uh, solar panel system. The difference is this is not a, um, they're not solar panels, they're photovoltaic. And the difference being is solar relies on the sun, photovoltaic only relies on daylight. And because we don't get a lot of sun in the UK, um, you're far better off having the photovoltaic. Um, and I have another thing here, guys, to show you. Hang on a moment. I'll bring you back now. Also, guys, in the garage, I keep a uh, 6 kVA, 6 days in ampage uh, generator. It's a petrol generator. Um, basically, I got this one, um, which I get out every end of every September, beginning of October time. Put them out, test them, make sure he's all working, make sure I've got 25 litres of uh, petrol um, in my cabinet ready. Um, and this is just in case we have a power cut around here, which we, we can get quite a bit. Um, and if we get heavy still because we're so high up, um, we do get cut off sometimes and the power does go out. So that's just another pack backup for obviously we can run the telly with that, uh, the fridge freeze, uh, um, whatever. Um, it's just worth having. Um, you know, you can't go wrong. Generators are not over expensive nowadays. Um, you can pick up a, a small one for maybe about 100 quid. Um, this one is a bit more substantial. I think I paid about 450 for this one. But this one here will run everything I need to run in the house for a quite a good distance of time obviously as long as i got fuel um so yeah so what i'll do guys i will bring you back in a minute there you go guys i just showed you my generator and i just thought i'd show you my uh, little wood burn stove um that there is my little basket of kindling um all that kindling is free it's uh, all bits of scrap wood i find on the sites that i work on etc um or different places i go i bring it back i leave it in the garage and then around about the summertime i'd uh, chop it all up and I've got another big crate in the garage which is filled up as well. Um, and that just keeps me going and saves me buying it. Um, also in this other basket, like I showed you outside, this is all the off cuts um, and bits and pieces from that um, oak factory. Um, which is pretty decent pieces. Um, it's solid oak so it's going to burn pretty well. It's uh, French oak, English oak, uh, Swedish oak. There's all different types mixed in there. Um, but that's going to be great. It's free. Well it's not free. But it's very very cheap um, so it's well worth having I think um, you know you can't go wrong I know we, we pay quite a bit for logs now I think I'm paying something like 115 a pallet um, when I originally had the wood burner fitted a couple of years ago um, I was paying about 70 quid so now as more and more people convert over back to the old way as I'd say with the open fires with the coal uh, etc um, it is starting to increase it um, this one I put in a couple of years back, um, I had to get it approved once it was fitted. Um, basically I just put some slate flooring down on there. I got some fireboard back in there on the plasterboard. Um, the flue goes out, we're in actually in my single story extension on my house. Um, so the flue goes straight through the roof. Um, the plasterboard is all fireboard that I fitted. Um, I also have a, a temperature gauge on the wood burner. Um, so it just gives you the different settings, so obviously in the silver is uh, the best operation, so you don't want it running too hot, but you don't want to run it too cold either, because obviously you can creosote your chimney and get a chimney fire, um, I do have the chimney cleaned every year, I also have a fan, um, this fan actually works on the heat of the stove, basically what it has is um, two magnets inside the fan, and as the base warms up and the heat rises, the, the force of it pushes against each other and that actually creates the power um, which turns the fan which blows the air onto the hot pipe which blows warm warm hair um, around the room and it just makes it much more efficient guys um, so like I said it's not a, it's not a massive stove um, compared to some that you can get this is only a small 5 kilowatt one um, it's a Merlin stove um, but you know it's great as well because it brings me back childhood memories um, obviously we used to have the open fires and stuff and there's nothing better when it's snowing outside and it's really cold and you walk in you've got a big roaring fire in your lounge you can't go wrong guys but anyway it is a great prep to have like I said before um, obviously because a lot of people in this country now rely on central heating because that's the best way to go obviously if the power goes and what they're saying now in this country that this year um, because we've got quite a few power stations gone they've got rid of the cold ones because of the European laws um, we've only got 5 to 10% spare power but the, the rate they're building houses um, I think next year we'll be lucky to have 5% power um, so I would say to you guys if you can do it, do it I mean you can get the little frontier stoves and that they're not really ideal for the house but 
A. If it's emergency backup and it's better than freezing to death, um, it's worth getting one of those and stick it in the garage or the shed and then just sort out some way of uh, putting the flue out through the window or something like that and you could go from there guys. Um, you just don't know. Um, but there you go guys. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I just thought I'd show you it. Like I said, you can't go wrong guys. It's best to prepare than not prepared. Like I said before, um, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Um, it's just a, a food for thought really guys. I hope this just jogs a few of the memories and just gets you thinking. Anyway guys, take care and I'll see you soon. Stay prepped. Bye for now.